Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Shrikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. So we are into the 10th week of this course on nonlinear and adaptive control. And I hope that all of you now have a very fair idea of how to design algorithms that will drive autonomous systems such as the SpaceX satellite orbiting the Earth that you see in the background. So what we were doing in this uh, previous session was uh, basically look at adaptive control in the presence of disturbance and how it impacts the robustness of the uh, overall closed loop system. And we realized that one of the big issues that uh, occurs because of adaptive control is the fact that though your errors might remain bounded, um, you know, under the action of an adaptive law, but what can happen in this is that your A tilde, that is your parameter estimation error, can very well go unbounded. Yeah. And now this is a rather serious issue because this uh, A tilde, that is a parameter estimation error going unbounded, um, means uh, only one thing, and that is that your parameter estimate A hat is going unbounded. And since this enters the you know, control law and in a very, you know, prominent way. Uh, this also means that in order to maintain this kind of uh, uh, bound on E, we will be forced to have uh, you know, an unbounded control law, yeah, which is of course something that is not acceptable in general. Yeah? Uh, not in general, but in every situation, because obviously there is uh, no way that you have unbounded controls available at your disposal all right so uh, one of the ways that we wanted to solve this was using projection of the parameter estimate yeah? so the idea is if i do know uh, what the bounds on my parameter are then i implement a, a projected adaptive control law yeah which means that you um, sort of ensure that your parameter update stays within these bounds because of course since the true parameter value is within these bounds it makes very little sense to uh, you know try to search for this true parameter value outside these bounds correct um so we were starting to look at projection so this is the direct most direct way to attack the problem if you do know these bounds then you can attack this problem in a very direct way that is in the earlier situation the lack of robustness is because of the uh, parameter going unbounded the parameter estimate going unbounded so now that's essentially what we do we prevent the parameter estimate from going unbounded yeah so it's like a direct way to attack the issue how did we do that we essentially formulated a tracking as always so we also have a tracking error dynamics right as always nothing very new here and then we redefine the control as this this is not a big deal because i mean yeah. ke and r dot are both known so obviously i can implement u if i know v and vice versa all right so what's the idea of doing projection how do we do projection is that we change the parameter that we estimate okay we we start to estimate this parameter phi star instead of a yeah uh, how do we do that we can write a in terms of this phi star using a tan hyperbolic function which lies between minus one to one right and because this function lies between minus one to one and it is zero exactly when uh, the argument is zero that is phi star is zero so if you put zero here 
you see that this outcome is uh, you know this is essentially uh, if you uh, you know if you essentially uh, try to see the bounds on this yeah you can see that this lies between 0 and 2 right this this 1 minus tan hyperbolic lies between 0 and 2 and if you substitute 0 you get a min on the right hand side if you substitute 2 you get a max on the right hand side all right so uh, so this is the uh, rather you know nice property that we are uh, in a sense looking okay and we will of course look at uh, how to make the error zero and so on and so forth and what is the right value of phi star and all that. okay so obviously you want to see what is the right correct value of phi star and all that i mean the correct value of phi star need not be zero obviously as you can see right because uh, that is not what we are looking for in fact if i put this equal to zero then what i will get is um uh, you know something like uh, a max minus a min over 2 uh, a max uh, so let me write this out if phi star is 0 i mean this is not the ideal value remember i'm just doing it for uh, like an illustration right say so phi star is 0 then you will get uh, something like a max minus a min over 2 plus a min all right so this is going to be some value right this is going to be uh, a max plus a min over 2 okay so and this may not necessarily be the right value of a right so phi star equal to 0 is obviously not the true value phi star has some true value which we don't know what we are doing essentially is that we are uh, moving the uh, unknown from uh, a being a to being uh, phi star okay and this is what helps us and we can do this because of of course the tan hyperbolic function which is available to us all right uh, just give me a moment uh, yeah all right so how did we go about this we um, started to uh, define what is called filtered variables right i mean and they essentially are true to its name yeah it's just filtered variable means that um, i define a filter on everything that appears on the right hand side right so so, so the right hand side is simply uh, yeah i'm sorry the right hand side is written here it's e dot is minus a e plus v plus a x right and so whatever quantities i know on the right hand side I define filters for that. Right? So I know A, I know V, I know X. I don't define any filter for A because it doesn't make sense. I don't know A. Yeah. Uh, any filter that we define in typical adaptive control setting would need to be implementable. All right. So therefore, we define these filters, which is EF dot is minus beta VF, uh, VF dot is minus beta VF plus V, and my XF dot is minus beta XF plus X. Right. So the important thing to remember is that we define all the filters with the same uh, gain beta all right so this is what we need to remember um, of course we have arbitrary initial conditions the initial conditions are not very important and now what do we, what did we want to do we wanted to define the dynamics in terms of our filtered variables all right how did we do that we simply took a derivative of this guy because that brings in e dot and e dot can be substituted from here that's simply the idea yeah so that's what i do i take derivative of both sides of this equation equation right here and then i get you know ef double dot and then i get a minus beta ef dot and a e dot and that e dot gets substituted from here which is this guy okay now because i want the dynamics just in terms of filtered variables um i substitute for e from here that is ef dot plus beta ef v as vf dot plus beta vf x as xf dot plus beta xf all right so just substituting everything in terms of my filtered variables okay wherever available and then i separate out terms uh, with beta on one side and without beta on the other side and if i define this uh, quantity that's multiplying beta on the right hand side as sigma right here 
it's very easy to see that the equation that I have now is sigma dot equals minus beta times sigma. So now, um, what do we do? We um, so because we know that this is an exponential decay, right? Um, that is sigma is equal to some sigma zero e to the power minus beta t. Uh, what we can say is that this is pretty much saying that instead of um, looking at this exponential decay term, which is well known in stability analysis uh, to be not of any impact, uh, we simply um, and we directly uh, put sigma equal to zero. And, and if you put sigma equal to zero, this is the dynamics that we get for EF dot. Okay. So, uh, of course, I could be, you know, very, very precise and say that this is actually plus sigma zero e minus beta t. So, basically, sigma is not zero, but sigma is exponentially decaying. But this term, like I said, uh, does not affect the stability analysis. So, uh, in effectual in stability analysis. Okay, this is ineffectual instability analysis and therefore we can ignore it and we choose to do that. Okay, we choose to do that. So, uh, let's see. So, then what do we do? We define, uh, we implement what is called a non-certainty equivalence type of uh, adaptation law. Right. So, uh, we just like A, we define an A hat. A was defined with a phi star here, if you remember. So, we but we define A hat with a phi hat plus delta hat. So, there are two terms, right? Not just a phi star or a phi hat corresponding to phi, which would have been certainty equivalence, but a non certainty equivalence. So, we have a phi hat and added to it, we have a delta hat term. So, we have two terms and we will see how we uh, use each of these terms, right? So, uh, because of uh, this sort of uh, using a and uh, phi and phi hat delta hat instead of uh, adapting for phi phi hat and so on um, we don't have to worry about um, a remaining bounded right because our control so if you notice our control is now vf of course it is in you know it is in terms of the filtered variables we will all, of course take it back to the original variable not a big problem yeah uh, easy to implement. So, the control is now containing a hat, okay, and it's not difficult to see that this a hat is guaranteed to remain within this nice bound, okay, a hat is guaranteed to remain within this nice bound, okay. so there is no scope of vf becoming unbounded, yeah, because we will of course prove that, you know, we will of course prove that xf will also be bounded, right, so there is no scope for vf being un unbounded. Uh, so, Vf remains bounded, okay. So, the other thing to remember is because we have defined a filter, yeah, it's and uh, V is defined via Vf and beta Vf and V is what we really implement on the system. Uh, we have to also claim that V is bounded and that's not difficult either because this is a stable system. Yeah, so so basically, Vf is bounded. The derivative is bounded. So V, which is the sum of Vf dot and beta Vf, is also going to be bounded. All right. So uh, boundedness of the control uh, is guaranteed, and that's essentially one of what was the uh, key issue in standard adaptive control. All right, and which we can avoid now. Great. Uh, so, I'm sorry, it uh, seemed like a long introduction, but I sort of re-explained a few things. So, this is where our lecture 10.4 begins, yeah, technically. Uh, but again, the explanations that I gave for the earlier material were rather important. And I hope you can keep those in mind, okay. Great. Um, so, what does the filtered closed loop system look like? It looks essentially like this, right? It looks like this. 
I mean, the expression looks simple, but in reality, this A and A hat are complicated. So we'll of course write it out. Yeah. Uh, so A minus A hat is actually this expression. Yeah. If you notice that the A min cancels out. Yeah. And you're left with this guy. All right. So not a big deal. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Now we define an, a variable, a sort of parameter error, if you may, as Z. Yeah, we use a different notation here and not the tilde notation because this is not certainty equivalence. That's it. Uh, and the Z is defined as phi hat plus delta, uh, actually, uh, because we are using hats everywhere. This should be a hat. Okay. So this is actually phi hat plus a delta hat minus phi star. All right. So this is what is your. Uh, uh, parameter error if you may all right and now we want to write the this term uh, i'm sorry we want to write this uh, using the z so of course we write phi hat plus delta hat as z plus phi star minus a tan hyperbolic phi star okay and so of course we substitute this quantity right here we get ef dot is minus aef plus uh, this whole thing yeah and where what have we done we have simply uh, used this shortening notation a shorthand notation for this half a max minus a min and call it mu and so what we have is minus a e f minus mu x f times this thing okay we've just flipped the sign that's not a big deal yeah now what do we do we have to choose two things one is delta how delta hat is obtained and one and the other is how phi hat is obtained all right so delta hat is not given any dynamics. It is simply defined as minus EFXF. So it's minus EFXF. Interestingly, I mean, if you do wish to do this, if you did want to do this, this um, essentially the delta hat expression um, looks like looks like the certainty equivalence uh, yeah adaptive update law yeah this looks like the certainty equivalence adaptive update law yeah why because i mean if you if you took the filtered system which is this guy yeah uh and you and and you thought of this as say you know thought of this as say a tilde yeah and you took your v as half ef squared plus half a tilde squared yeah you would get your a tilde i mean in fact it's a very quick calculation i can simply do this yeah this is an aside if a minus a had to say a tilde and I take my V as half EF square plus half. Well, actually, I don't need a gamma. So I take half A tilde square. So V dot will be what? EF EF dot, which is minus AEF plus A tilde XF minus A tilde A hat dot. So if you wanted to choose a A hat dot here, what would you do? a hat dot will be uh, ef times x yeah a hat dot would be ef times x yeah so let me see there is only a sign issue here that we might need to resolve but i think the sign issue is because we are defining uh, things the other way Okay, so the expression is exactly the same if you see. You get EFXF and you get an EFXF. The sign issue is just because of how you choose A minus A hat and all that. Yeah, let's not worry too much about that. But the expression for uh, delta hat pretty much is motivated by this. Okay, so interesting for you to observe, I hope. So I hope you can sort of connect to this. All right, connect to this guy. All right, great. Um, now what do we do we start to we we actually don't use a lyapunov function in this case to get a phi hat dot 
uh, at least uh, yeah not yet we don't go to the lyapunov function at all so we directly compute a z dot yeah, and z z dot is just phi hat dot plus delta hat dot this phi star is a constant of course unknown but still a constant so phi hat dot remains as it is and then you compute delta hat dot I'm sorry yeah compute delta hat dot so phi hat dot is as it is and then delta hat is minus ef xf dot minus xf ef dot which is this whole thing now what do we do we take phi hat dot so as to cancel everything we can cancel yeah so notice i can cancel this guy right i can cancel this guy and that's it right i cannot cancel either of these terms right so i choose phi hat dot to cancel this term with, with this and this term with this guy right and so what am i left with i'm left with a z dot which is this stuff okay so this is the important thing to remember uh, the update law is already chosen uh, you know before the lyapunov analysis it is already chosen before the lyapunov analysis okay so that's so that's important to remember so that was the there are two pieces in the update in the in the in trying to find the parameter there is the delta hat and there is the phi hat so delta hat is this and phi hat is and delta hat is given by a static term and the phi hat is an update with this sort of an expression important to remember unlike the certainty equivalence method which we were doing until now the phi hat nor the delta hat to be honest are chosen uh, using a lyapunov function they are just chosen separately just intuitively yeah i mean we are choosing a uh, delta hat comes from uh, is motivated by the c adaptive update law as we just saw and phi hat is obtained by trying to cancel whatever we can cancel in the z dot term. all right great now now we can uh, now we can sort of move on to the stability analysis yeah so we have now uh, two pieces of the dynamics right we have the uh, let's see we have the ef dot which is written in this form right and we have the z dot so these two are the uh, critical ones in fact i will mark them with a different color right so this is the um ef dot and this is the z dot equation so these are the two equations that are required anyway because the time we have essentially these two variables ef and z xf and all are of course functions of these so we don't have to worry about that right now yeah right so we want to do a, a stability analysis of this closed loop system now, right all right uh so let's see how we do it okay i mean i will do a few steps first um, so the first thing to remember uh, to look at is the sort of lyapunov function we chose the lyapunov candidate is a rather interesting one mm, it is of this form half ef squared which is just the normal quadratic in the first element but in the second term this is rather interesting there is a lambda positive lambda divided by 2 times a log cosh log cosine hyperbolic z plus phi star minus z tan hyperbolic phi star right uh, now what we want to of course we want to know and claim and uh, we anyway want to do typically babalat's lemma type analysis so we are more than happy for v to be semi-definite positive right so we know that the first term is of course nice right so no problem first term is uh yeah it is sign definite yeah so no doubt but what about the second term right what about the second term so uh, so this requires a little bit of um, you know careful analysis so what we will do is let's take partial of um, log cosine hyperbolic z plus phi star minus z tan hyperbolic 
five star. Okay. So what do how do I take the partial? Just whatever. Take the derivative. Right? So this will be there is only one variable here. Right. So therefore we have to take partial with respect to only this one variable. And so this is become this essentially becomes uh, the derivative of this is one over cos hyperbolic times sine hyperbolic works exactly like the standard logarithm. Uh, so this is tan hyperbolic z plus phi star minus if I take partial with respect to z, it's just tan hyperbolic phi star, right? Uh, and so this is what we get as the partial with respect to z. And of course, you want to note a few things. The first thing to note is that this term looks very similar to the term here. In fact, just it's just the flipped sign version of this term. You have tan hyperbolic phi star minus tan hyperbolic z plus phi star. And I've taken the Lyapunov candidate in a smart way so that it's partial actually has the same term. Obviously, this will help us in the analysis. But the other important thing to see is that this term is always greater than equal to zero. Okay, this term is always positive, non-negative, right? Uh, why we say that is because, I mean, again, this is something you can verify. Right? This is something you can verify. So, uh, this is because you have a phi star here and it basically when z is equal to zero, these two are the same, so it's equal to zero. Okay, for any other value of z, this is non-negative. Okay, that's the whole premise on which you know you sort of say that. Um, so, in fact, let me see. Let me think about this a little bit carefully, a little bit more carefully. All right. Uh, Right, so basically what I'm trying to do is to take this V function uh, and compute a sort of minima for this function. Okay? That's the idea. And uh, we claim that, uh, so how do you compute a minima? You take partial with respect to the variables and equate them to zero. And, and then whatever you get is the minima. Right? So, so in fact, let's see. Because I took the partial, I want to equate it to zero. I apologize, I didn't complete the steps. So, so I'm taking the two terms separately because you can see they're decoupled. There's only EF here and there's only Z here. So I can I can do them separately, decouple them. Not a big deal, right? So the, it's obvious that the this term is minimum at EF equal to zero, right? Because I can take partial and equal to zero. Now to find the minimum of this term, I take the partial. I took the partial here and I will equate it to zero. Equate to zero for minima maximum yeah of course it can be maxima or minima uh, so when does this equal to a minima maxima it's evident that uh, at uh, z equal to zero and i claim it is in fact a minima yeah i'm not going to do this computation you can check it out on your own but it turns out that this has a minimum at z equal to zero right and what is the minimum value? It is exactly, what is the minimum value? It's exactly going to be zero. Okay, it's exactly going to be zero. All right, so you that's what you have to verify. Okay, so you will have, uh, if you put z equal to zero here, yeah, at z equal to zero, this will be log cos, this is just, Uh, log of cos hyperbolic of phi star, I believe. Ah, okay. Sorry, the minimum is not, uh, the minimum is not, minimum value is not zero. The minimum value is not zero. Uh, it's a positive quantity. So, it's a positive quantity. Yeah. So the minimum is not zero. I apologize. That's my mistake. It is a positive quantity. It's exactly log cos hyperbolic. In fact, is lambda times log cos hyperbolic 
phi star. If I plug in z equal to 0, because z equal to 0 here and z equal to 0 basically gets rid of this term. Yeah, I think that is okay. Yeah, I think this is fine. Absolutely. All right. All right. So the important thing to remember is that the minima of this function is strictly positive. Yeah. Again, I have not verified it's a minima. You have to take a second derivative and verify, but it is easily verified. Yeah, that this is in fact a minima. Okay. So minimum value I was thinking would be zero, but it is not. It's actually log cos hyperbolic pi star. So z goes z is zero. Because if I check here carefully, you have uh, if I equate this to zero, then uh, tan hyperbolic z plus phi star is equal to tan hyperbolic phi star only when z is equal to 0. All right. Excellent. So, what did we look at today? We have uh, sort of proceeded uh, further towards uh, this proof of this projection based adaptive control. We are yet to uh, complete the proof, of course, but we are we have done the filter design and we have also uh, you know sort of uh, given the update loss which is the phi hat dot and also there is a delta hat in this non-certainty equivalence type design um, in the subsequent session we will be able to uh, complete the stability proof for this set of system and we'll also try to understand what the implications of such a uh, you know this kind of an adaptive controller is all right, all right. great thank you and i'll see you again soon